Cedric Maxwell podcast is powered by Price Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell podcast. Another special guest with us. I am Josue Pavone. He is Cedric Maxwell. And we got Gary Washburn of the Boston Globe uh, joining us once again. Off-season edition. Well, I guess it's sort of a uh, got free agency. You got the NBA draft to recap. But how you been? I mean, the last two weeks, you just covered a championship team for the first time. How's everything? You got a new book. We'll get into that in a little bit. But how's, how's everything been, man? Oh, it's been good. It's been good. It was cool to see, you know, them finally get over the top. We ain't got to talk about that no more. It's been literally, I've been on this, been in the city 15 years, and they've been, except for one year, trying to get a championship. And to see them get over the top and finally get it done and get the monkey off their back, man, that was, it was, it was cool to see. And then the Whoa, parade. My friend, it's not, you know, this, this is a black show. We don't use no terms like getting the monkey off your back. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> Get the, an, get the anvil off your back. All right, get the anvil off your back. Thank you. Uh, like Roadrunner. Uh, you got to look that up, Joe Swiss, before your time. Like Roadrunner. Yeah, that is, man. I don't know that one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was good. It was good for them to get over the top. The parade was awesome. Like, I didn't – I didn't, never been to a parade before uh, in terms of, like, a team celebrating. And just to see – all the types of people out that came out that love the Celtics, you know, people think that, I mean, obviously Max, I mean, people watched your, your days and they saw a number of white folks in, at the at, at Boston garden and thought those are the only people, but there's so many people of color, so many from everywhere who love the Celtics, man. I mean, it's crazy. And it was just to see all them out that day on that Friday, all shapes and sizes, colors, mm ages from two to 92 you know i mean that was i was like wow boston really showed the best of itself um and it, so it was cool it was cool to see you know them finally you know what i said like uh people think that oh, i like the team that they're, they're good guys i'm good with joe me, me and joe are, are great at this point you know um that's serious, Max. Don't give me that look. <laughs> we, can get, we can get into the scalp. Yeah, 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 Max, explain scalp. that look. Who we, can that? The, we can get into the scalp perk thing in a minute if you want. But uh, Oh, yeah, we can do that for sure. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was awesome. It's been a cool two weeks to just kind of watch it. And now, as you see, other teams are ramping up. Um, not, my, meanwhile, I'm watching uh, – I'm watching ESPN News here, and they got two brothers doing cornhole. So uh, I don't know what to say about that, Max. <laughs> I wish you was. On I a, wish you could. <laughs> on a Sunday, huh? On a Damn. Sunday, man. Like, what happened? <laughs> what happened, man? That's why all the French folks is getting drafted higher than us in hoops because, bro, you know, you're playing cornhole. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, yeah here's one of the crazy things we think about, though. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I know we all laugh. Two brothers playing time. corner. I don't know what to say. To yeah, this, I've never seen that, man. I got to turn that over. I, <laughs> I guess we've officially overcome, man. Yeah. Well, well, well here's the thing I'll say about you, what you're talking about. You're talking about people, you know, that you see all kind of white folks in the audience. Well, most black people can't afford to go in and yeah. get tickets at the car. They couldn't afford it 40 years ago. I mean, uh, and now you're talking about those tickets were... You know, to get in the building was three or four thousand dollars a seat. Yeah, yeah. three hundred section. Uh, I heard it was like twelve hundred. Yeah. So, yes, yes. For, for, yeah, that was the highest. For, yeah. For yeah. The three hundred section. I heard the lowest was twelve hundred. Yeah, for, for crazy. People that come in for color is like you know the, that's why they had to be out in the streets where it was free, and they can yeah. celebrate. They can celebrate their team, and they got behind their team. But right. it, it was such a beautiful day, and you know, just the environment was just crazy good. Uh, you know, what I did like about Boston the fact that it did not seem like other cities had violence to go along with the parade. Yeah, it was good, and um, it was just really cool. I, I'm like you though. I, I, I probably more than you and Joe Sway wanted to see them win this series because championship. Because I got tired of all these damn haters who've been around. I mean, you look at ESPN, I think mm -hmm. nine out of 12 reporters said the parade was going to be in Dallas. 
And yeah, no, I think it was nine I, out of seventeen, but like, yeah. I mean, that's crazy, I, mean I love Perk, but Perk was like, Oh, I got this, I got Dallas winning games three and four. Like, and I'm not saying that you know that everybody has a perspective, but I respect Perk a hell of a lot. But I just think they thought, oh, wait, well, wait till they get to Luca and Kyrie. Oh, that mm-hmm. oh, they go. I don't think the their road to the finals was respected, right? Like, I think mm-hmm. and, and understand they beat Miami without Jimmy Butler, they beat Cleveland. Last couple games of Donovan Mitchell, Indiana didn't have um, Halliburton, but they were able to win both. I mean, but they this team had proven all year right. it was not it, it was the best. And I just well, you think know that, I, here, here's one of the things that happened though. You think about those games, and which set the Celtics back and made people think differently was when the Celtics lost to the Lakers uh, in Boston with no LeBron and no AD. Yeah. Those kind of games put other things. And people just didn't say, well, you know, maybe this played a, 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 a bad game. I think that was it with the Celtics is that that and the biggest narrative, which was untrue, was that everybody said all the national people, the best player on in this series right now is Luca. Yeah. And we found out it wasn't. It was Tatum mm-hmm. and Brown by a, a large, large mark. I'm not sure right now if Luca could keep me, you or Gary in front of him right now, we were dribbling down the court. I, I just don't think he could. I mean, <laughs> what do you th- he was yeah. so, he was so bad. Yeah. And there was some record they were saying that said he got blown by 65% of the time. I mean, that doesn't that that is just crazy to think of. That means your effort is lacking or you you can't move your feet. But if you're such a a, a great player, you should be able to at least stay in front of a guy. And because yeah. of that. Aiden Brown just ran rough, rough shot. And I think the biggest narrative that I've seen here lately is that what people want to pick at is that, oh, you know what? Jalen Brown shouldn't have got the MVP. He shouldn't have been Tatum. People just want to stir shit up with this team when I think they were just happy. Just I, Tatum was just genuinely happy to win to a, be a champ To be a champion, and, right. And like, right. They, they get that shit off his back was the biggest thing that people looked at. And now... They can go out and play next year. Uh, I talked to Michael Felker, like you on the show, and he was trying to cause those same waves. And, well, Jalen Brown, well, Jason Tatum didn't get the MVP. So the meat left on the bone for him. And Brown didn't do I said, and then he asked me, so what do you think Max is going to make the Celtics, you know, so they're not complacent? I said exactly what you said. Tatum wasn't the MVP. Brown was. Brown wasn't the uh, all-pro this year. So you had to have those things. Then there's meat left on the bone that they can go out and they can try to play. Joe Mazzula has to convince, play, convince people, not us, convince people that he's a hell of a coach. And he is. He's one of the best coaches right now in the National Basketball Association. And all these other guys are going to get their money. And the biggest thing about it when people say, well, how about Denver? Celtics are bringing back damn near their entire core. And because of that, there's going to be continuity like Denver. People don't realize how good Jeff Green was with those guys or uh, Bruce Brown was Bruce good Brown, yeah. Denver. They had no- <laughs> the Celtics don't have that problem. And I'm not sure. I'm sure you'll know better than me that there are going to be some players out there who haven't won a ring that say, shit, I want to play with the Celtics now. I, I, want, I want to win one. I, I, I want to go in a Blake Griffin type guy who is out there who hasn't play, done whatever but said, look, damn, I, I want to win with these guys. So I think it's easier right now for Brad Stevens, who did a fantastic job, to go out and recruit and try to get somebody else. Yeah, I think the the, the hottest team is the team that just won a championship. And so although the Celtics are limited with their financial, they can only offer minimum deals. Remember, the market is going to squeak. There's no middle class anymore, pretty much. When the market begins and all the – the Paul Georges and James Hardens and all these guys signed. There's going to be a bunch of brothers left out who are going to be jumping, trying to jump, catch onto a ship, and 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 not drown and not be getting uh, some uh, training camp invites. And they're going to take that minimum money from the Celtics, especially knowing one, if you're a big man, you can probably play because the Celtics are going to need some help in the middle with Porzingis being out or for being on his thirty age thirty eight now. We don't know about Cornette and Tillman, whether they'll be back. They can try to bring both of those guys back. But if you're coming in, you're going to get a chance to play. You can, they got two draft picks who might be able to play. Like, 
it's good. Like they've solidified their team to make more than one run. That's the thing. And, I, mm-hmm. and obviously, Max, you know more than anybody <laughs> about one trying to repeat. It's hard as hell because I'm obviously 81. You guys came back, I'm sure, in 82 and thought, oh, it's us. And you guys lost to Philadelphia, you know, because Philly was coming after you. But just having that that eye of the tiger, that desire, and I'm and I have full confidence in Missoula with his different type of methods of motivation that he's going to get those guys ready to go to to come back as opposed to like you know spending the summer hanging out partying obviously Jason and Drew got the Olympics you know I don't see Jason Jalen being on some three month vacation and not work like they're gonna they're gonna come back hungry and now because now you're talking about making history now you're talking about being one of the great eras of the Celtic history now you won a championship so you're equal with 08, but now it's a chance to be better than 08. 08 couldn't win that second title. Right. They got hurt in 09. They lost in game seven in 2010, and then age kind of kicked in. But now you've got a chance to win two and three years, three and four years, back to back. You've got a chance to make some history here. Mm-hmm. You know, the Celtics haven't gone back to back and since the 60s. Like you have a chance to do something special. And that's the thing I think, like you said, Max, like. They got the core back, and they're gonna bring. And they, you know, they could probably use another old head, another professional guy who's gonna come in, maybe take less money, and just be like, just wants to be a part of what. That's the 08 team, <coughs> Eddie House and PJ Brown and Sam Cassell. Those guys are like, I'm trying to get a chip, and mm-hmm. they see now Boston's the place to, to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to look at this drink right here because. I need to tip this up. Yeah, doc, Dr. Pepper, man. Yo, Mac, Max Dr. loves that shit, Gary. That, he loves it. I'm trying to I'm trying to give this to, to Gary after he talked so kumbaya about him and the coach. I mean, this is – these two guys have been like, you know, what, what is it, oil and, and, and whatever? Because Tom and Jerry. So many, times, <laughs> so many times I'll see a question being asked, and I was like – and I hear the question being asked by Gary. And I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Joe Mazzula, he can't give you a straight answer. I mean, see, so many times you've given Joe Mazzula a layup. And going, so Joe, um, your team is really playing well and that, that, that. And Joe will look at you right now and going, well, what do you think about Jesus Christ? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's not that far off. That is not that far off. That's our, that's our friend Vince Goodwill that asked about him being a black coach. And when I heard that Yo, question, what was I, was, that? I cringed. I was like, because here's the thing about the finals. That, like, all the national reporters got a chance to see Joe Mazzula live right. and in person. What, what, yep. what you Joe Mazzula's great, Joe what Mazzula's you've been great dealing with all the time. Which exactly. All the time. Everybody, and I said, and I looked at, I looked at the national reporters. He's, and he was like, in peak, y'all peak thought form. It was me. Y'all thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Now you know. Now you know what's happening. Now you know what's yo, for real, Gary's looking around the room like, yo, imagine 82 games of this. Yep. Yeah, y'all see what y'all right. see what I'm dealing with? All right. Y'all see what I'm talking about now? Everybody, everybody, oh, Gary, I start shit. No, no. Hey, yo, yo, Gary was the only one smiling at that point. He's like, look at her round like, I was laughing to have the question. That was a I was laugh, and I was like, oh, I know he ain't gonna answer this. <laughs> Let me, let, me, let me listen yeah. to see what he says. Yeah, that I was, was like, that was a layup. Two black coaches have come together, and, and you're going. This is the time to play your black card. And go, nope. for real. And and not laid and move. You're gonna nope. move the line. No, not just. And then, uh-huh. and then Max, two, two, two black head coaches just got fired too. Like you know, so it was a it was a very relevant question. It wasn't like it came out of nowhere. You know, like this stuff no, has been no, talked like, about every I'm every off season. I don't know what the hell you talking about. Like, <laughs> How many of them are Christians? I was like, yep. And then everybody looked at me, and I was like, I was like, see, y'all think it was me. Y'all, think, y'all thought I was crazy, right? Y'all thought I was a hard driving reporter. Oh, I'm Gary doesn't like the team. He yeah, yeah. Gary, Gary's so, trying to build the narrative. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, I was like, Gary, Gary, you see this dude? You see this dude? Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Ask another one. Who, who's see, next? I, you see, I didn't start no, I, I, see, I didn't start Gary, no Gary, stuff during the finals. It's your time I was, to ask the question. Gary said, you know what? 
I'm going to defer to somebody else. Yep, go, I'm going to let them. Y'all, you know, you y'all go, do this. You go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead man, Malika. Go ahead. go ahead, Malika. You go ahead. Ask <laughs> go ahead, yeah. Somebody like that, yeah. You see, there was nothing that happened between me and him in the finals. Like, no, yeah. no. I know what he's going to say. Nope. Like, did you? Like, <laughs> did you did you get a chance to did you guys do like a last embrace or something? When's the last time you did you speak to him before the parade? When when, when was the last time you guys I got spoke to, to him talk? the day after the parade? We had a great conversation. The day after the parade, I called him. Um, I texted him because I didn't get a chance to really after the whole everything, he had so many people around him and everybody trying right. to do one-on-one interviews. I didn't have right. a chance to pull him aside, but I did text him the morning after and said congratulations to him. And then we had a good conversation. Um the day after the parade. So, uh, yeah, I said, like, it was, I'm happy for him. Second youngest coach behind Bill Russell to win a championship. Um, and all of what he did worked. And I think he's learned a lot on the way. I think him having a great staff around him helped him trusting his players, being a little bit more open-minded. Um, and, you know, you just got to, you got to think now, you know, is Joe going to be one of those guys that coaches probably 20 years? I don't know if he's – I don't know with the intensity that he has that he'll be able to do this for a long, long time. I think he's really intense, but he's only going to get better. So right. I respect him. I said I have much respect for Joe Missoula. He's an unusual guy. I think everybody saw that. And I said, you didn't see me doing nothing during the finals. I was I was, I was, was a good guy. <laughs> I stayed my my like Max. I stayed out of my I stayed I stayed out, I stayed out of grown folk business. Uh, I, I yeah, like, you really y'all did. Ask, y'all, ask, yeah. y'all want them big feature questions? You want to ask them? And then the dude asked him about being half Italian. He didn't bite on that either. He, he said, "I don't care if you, if, they, if we can rebound and, and, and get spacing on the floor. I don't care what you are. I'll be a you know whatever." Like like I was like, see. It isn't summer in New England without making a trip to Fenway Park, and this year is no different thanks to Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on Game Time app will actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guaranteed. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. We cannot miss out on any Sox-Yankees matchups this year, so make sure you get your tickets, man. There's nothing like it, especially in the summertime and especially at Fenway Park. Save up to 60% buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Save even more with the exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference because they have the lowest price guaranteed. And thanks to their game time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account and use the code CLNS for 20% off your first purchase. That's code CLNS. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the offer code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So, we, all right, give me we, the. We did, oh, go ahead, Gary, man. Gary, we did think it. We did think it was him when we, you know, we wanted, me and Gary, me and uh, Just Sway wanted to pull your black card after we saw you on TV because. You you lost some of your blackness there for a minute the way you were talking. <laughs> what on? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 that's not what I said. But oh. that, that's Max. <laughs> wow, man. no, 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 no. I didn't. That's I wasn't trying to take no. Card, I, I was trying to take your black card, man. Oh, I just think it's funny man. how when you, when you when you when you with us, you just you just you know you're, yeah, you're more loose. you. You're more you. You're more loose, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, what's that? Oh, well. And then we got on the other show. It was like, well, I tell you what, I really. <laughs> Missoula's done a great job and uh, doesn't have to do. And uh, I'm like shaking your head. And I'm like, damn, is, what's wrong with this brother? But then with us, he's like, man, Joe Missoula, he's a weird man, dude, man. man. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Man, you ain't right, man. You know what? But, but this is an awesome. This I ain't coach what, with you, man. I'm, I'm versatile, man. But, but this is what, <laughs> yeah, that's a better way to put it, right? This right. is what we have to go through as black reporters. We have to go through, especially dealing with our own, and we also have to go deal in a more of a white environment. And so our, our diction, everything does change because you're, you're fitting into that system. Whereas when you're talking to us, it's like, yo, what's up, man? I, and 
but that's not the way you get invited back to make that three hundred dollars that you went in and made on, you know, NBC. <laughs> what you trying to? Hey, why you calling? <laughs> why you calling my money out, man? Why you, <laughs> yeah, why right. You, why you my you, right now, man? Where'd you get that figure from? Right? <laughs> what are you talking about? Because why, I made why, it. Why are you, saying, why are you calling out my monies, man? Why are you trying to? Why you, going, got, why you got, got my hands on my papers, man? I got no biggie on you, man. That's what, that's what, that's what, this is what they tell you. If you come into the studio, you make three hundred dollars. If they have we you, don't, we don't know how much I. We don't know, man. We we they have you on Zoom. Yeah. Pay two hundred dollars. It's very I, x x like, amount. I'm not right. Big money. If I was, x amount of dollars. Right. right. We'll uh, keep it at that. <laughs> Mexico's wild. Oh, when, when, oh Mexico. so we, should we ask you what you get when when you're wearing the uh, the, the yarmulke on your head? Oh man, that's, <laughs> that's a that's a whole nother check. Oh, that's another story. <laughs> Because you want to go, right. you want to be invited. I'll tell you one thing, man. Okay, I've been invited to <laughs> Jewish temples. They're they're very inviting. It's great contrast. Yeah. Yeah, provide some context, please, because people don't know. Right? If any other religion invites me to speak, I am there. Muslim, <laughs> just where you see them hands. Protestant, Mormon, Mormon, uh, Baptist. Catholic, if they invite me to speak, I will speak in any church. So don't act like oh, just, it's just a Jewish temple. This Jewish one in Needham, um, and one in I want to say, God, I can't remember where it was a few years ago. It was on the north side, I think Peabody, um, invited me and I spoke. So, well, well see, anytime, what? You go, you go yeah, only hold on, real quick. All the other Cedric Maxwell podcasts will Gary have to explain this to everybody. I'm just saying, they want you to volunteer. I ain't biased toward nobody. Yeah, I'm going to any church. We want you to tell the story. Like, damn, man, I need to get paid now. No, we need you to volunteer your time to come into our place and do something. I'll do that for the, yeah. I'll do no, that. No, 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 don't do that. No, so Max. No, no. That's so his you, advice. You call, yeah, that's you his advice. Me problems when you when you say well, Gary doesn't ask <laughs> oh, for man. money, but I tell you what, Max is asking for money when he goes. Yeah, Max asking. Well, you a champion. You a retired number. Like <laughs> it's like when we go to the garden. You get you get you get free reign in the family room to get all the nice fresh chicken fingers and wings. That we can't. Yo, get that's a good wait, point. Wait, wait, that, that is your. You be, you be pulling. You be pulling up with those. You be pulling up with the nice, now the fresh put, fried now, chicken wings. Now he's now he's putting my business out. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> now you put my business. Oh well, I. Think you you, you were talking about you. his. You were talking about his paper you. earlier. Fool, yeah, right. Fool, I'm number thirty-one. That's who I am. I'm number thirty-one. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> go, go out to the court and look up. Look, and when you see that's thirty-one. What, yeah, you see my yeah. That's who I be doing. Let me do it. Let me let me do it like like it's supposed to be done. But the woman back there in the back who didn't know who I am, bitch, I'm Rick James, bitch. That's who yeah, I that's am. pretty much what you said. <laughs> pretty I'm much. Thirty one. What? Number thirty one. All right. Well, look, look it up. Google it. We'll well, Gary, give us give us the lowdown on this whole uh, uh, Kendrick Perkins at the Tellers Parade. What was it? Did he not get the invite? Is he out of the group text? Like, what's the what, like? Is, is this the the Boston radio trying to stir things when he had a uh, they had a uh, Perk on? And he was talking about he had a bone to pick with Scal, but you were there. What, what was going on? Okay, so it sounded like okay they had an 08 uh, duck boat. They had an 08 boat, right? With, duck boat, right? Their trophy. Pierce came out, Eddie House. I think Cassell was on that. because Cassell was on there. Yeah, Cassell, yeah. Um, I think Leon Poe. Leon Poe, that's the other one. Four yeah. members of the 15 or whatever, right? And even though, and you saw, I mean, you got the great interview with Ray Allen. He went to game five, like, yeah, right on, yeah. under, on the day. Really cool like, moment. Like, yeah. he just, I mean, he was just like, I didn't see, I was like, damn, Ray was at the game. Like, so, but I think, it, it's so, what was it? Scow. Paul, Leon, Eddie, Eddie, so five members of, of the team. And I guess they asked Al what Perk was invited, and he's like, well, I don't think he would be invited and whatever. Ooh. And, you know, there's, there's some tension Ooh. now. There's some stuff because yeah. obviously the quote of him calling uh, Missoula a bird brain, like kind of a bird brain. That was a tough quote, right? That was a, It was a very critical quote. I think it was a few months ago after they lost to Denver um, at home. It was like the home loss to Denver. 
and he went in on Missoula. Okay. So people, people didn't forget him. Yeah. Yeah. So Scal kind of threw in the atmosphere that there was some tension between Perk and the organization. And Perk is like, hold up. First of all, keep my name out your mouth. Secondly, <laughs> yeah. like, it's not like I got invited or they invited the whole 08 team. I don't know how right. the coaches did it. I'm sure if some members of, of Gar, if Garnett was like, hey, I want to be on the duck boat, they would, of course, brought him on. And I think with Pierce, Pierce is in Boston a lot, a lot more than Garnett or any of the 08 team. House works for NBC Sports mm-hmm. Boston. I don't, I know he lives in Phoenix, but I think House comes here a lot too. Scal, of course, and then Leon Poe works for the organization. So it's right. kind of easy. So I don't think there was some like 15 invites where Rondo and Gabe Pruitt and, um, <laughs> and Scott Pollard. Yeah, Scott yeah. Pollard got, you know, <laughs> glad Scott Pollard's doing well now. He had some uh, medical issues. He, he seems like coming right. back, coming yeah, back that's right. strong. So, so, uh, kudos. Yeah, shout, to, shout out, shout out to him. Yeah. 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 Uh, to Scott Pollard. Glad he's doing, doing a lot better. Um, you know, it wasn't like there was an over 15 invites and Perk was like, Oh, we're writing fourteen, but not not Perk. Right. So Perk, it's the way it's the way he worded it, though. The way he scout worded it, Perk, as if like he was. Said, I had a conversation with Perk. Yeah. Um, you know, who called me and we had a conversation. And Perk was just wasn't happy that. And he's his whole thing is, you know, I respect the Celtics, but one that was 24's moment, not 08's moment. I respect that too. Mm-hmm. Two. Like I was, you know, like he said, I haven't come to Boston on my own in years. I come from for work or whatever. Like I'm not, you know, I'm a former Celtic and you know, I love those guys, but it's not like I'm coming back every reunion and I'm I'm coming back here for work. And I cover the league and I gotta tell like it is. So I respect Perk for that. And then Scal, he was upset that Scal didn't call him back with immediacy, and Scal was like, Well, I'm a busy man and my bad and so, you know, let's hope they can talk it out. It's kind of – it's petty, but, you know, you probably shouldn't have – Scott might not have refrained from saying, oh, Perk's got issues with – you know, do I think Missoula was upset? Yeah, like anybody would be upset being called a bird brain, and anybody would be upset with some – you know, and, but Perk's been hard on – but I don't know what team Perk likes. Perk's hard on everybody. Yeah, like, for you real. know what I'm saying? Like, like – He's the he's he's like you know Max. We grew up. He's the dad that your, your father didn't like none of his kids. Like it wasn't like you know, <laughs> he your like he don't like him. He don't like me. Like, equal, equally bad. Like you know, like that's kind of how it is. Perk keeps it real. He said he said Anthony Davis might ask for a trade at the deadline if he if it don't work out with Reddick. Like. Perk drops it on the damn. He doesn't care. He's made some probably some adversaries and lost some friendships because he's had to keep it real. And I respect that. And he's he's been hard on the Celtics this year. And he's you know and he he suggested they might break up the Jays a couple years ago. And you know, but hey, everybody, a lot of people got proved wrong. And I think Perk is personally happy for those guys. I think he like he he enjoyed his time in Boston. He was. For any place he played, he was in Boston for the longest. He won a championship. You know, I think he had a couple of his kids in Boston. So, you know, I think he's um okay, but he's kind of like Scal. Like, first of all, bro, like, why are you – why am I on – like, anybody talk about – anybody call Rondo? Anybody call yeah. Ray? Like, why is it just me and I'm the one that didn't – I got disinvited? Like, he said, if I got invited, I probably wouldn't have come. He got stuff to do. He lives in Texas. So he gonna come out yeah. here for one day to to raise the banner in an hour parade? Yes, he would. You think he, you think he would? Yeah. yeah he would. If he got if he got the let's, invite, let's, you think let, you think that's what it was? I mean, let's keep it real. Uh oh. The organization could not have been happy with some of the things that Perk said, yeah. and I mean, we've all we look. You and I, broadcasters, we're all we always in some way. People are tugging at you to say what you said might have been said differently. When you when and and me more than any because they feel like I I work for the organization. So if I said something, I've heard you know people call me and going well you might have wanted to phrase it. I mean I remember the one of the lines I used it was when Kevin Garnett was out. I happened to say that 
somebody was on, I was on TV and radio, and the guy said, "Do you think the Celtics can win when Kevin Garnett got hurt the year they won the championship? The year after they won the championship?" I said, "No, no, it's, it's impossible." <laughs> And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it's impossible. <laughs> Hell no. And, and do you think do you think that I got a call? I got a call saying you, know, you might want to, you know, try to rephrase. Well, it, rephrase it. I was right. Backtrack. Backtrack. You know, yeah. Right. But in a, in a way that when you are when they perceive you as part of the organization, because Perk will lay his head on the fact that look, in a way, we won the championship. I was on the team today. So so you you it's kind of hard to say one way where you are saying, look, I was part of this organization, I know how great it was, but then on the other end, to kind of be overly critical about a guy like Joe Mazzula. I can understand you said I don't agree with what he did. I've said that before. Maybe you might want to take somebody out or do this or do that, but the bird brain thing, that that would rub this organization the, the wrong way. I mean, people were upset when Grant Williams was in the back. They were saying Grant Williams was celebrating with the organization. And people were pissed off at Grant for him to be there at the game. They didn't say nothing about Taco, but for Grant to be there. You can't be mad at Taco. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point, though. They both play for the squad, yeah. Anybody say anything at all about all uh, with Taco, but they sure went at Grant. Grant played with both teams. So I can see that he had some a vested interest. He had friends who were there. And it just happened that his buddies for the Celtics won. I'm sure he had to be happy about that. Matter of fact, we had him on our podcast. And uh, we talked about who would win the championship. He predicted this whole and, thing. And yeah. Grant predicted, you know, kind of what would happen. But, uh, you know, let's not be so naive to think that maybe there wasn't something in there or where Perk was, that, you know, it's different. I I just believe that, you know, when you say something about a team, it's going to come back some way to haunt you. I mean, hell, do you think Stephen A. Smith is invited to any damn Celtic parades or anything like that? (laughs) You know, he's not being invited because some of the things he said about this organization. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's a a tricky spot, man. If you ask me, I just feel like uh, it's one of those things where, like, like Perk said, it wasn't an official invite list and he was not on it. You know, it's one of those things where if you wanted to be on the, uh, the the duck boat or if you want to be involved, I'm sure people put their name in it. Let me hear this. Go ahead. You said what? If he wants to be if he wanted to be on the duck boat, what would happen? Let me make sure you hear what he would have put his name in. He would put his name in there. And would he have been on the duck boat? I'm asking. I'm asking you right now. Those that I don't know. I, 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 no, no, I'm asking. You. What do you think? So this probably would have said no. Okay. All right. Right. But he wasn't gonna put himself out there. But but who scout to put make himself the in, the team ambassador to be like? I don't know if he would have been. You know what I mean? So I can see where Perk stands, saying like, "Wait, well, who are you to make that call?" You know? I, I don't know. Scout. Just... Scal has a carte blanche with this team in different areas that most people don't. And and I love Scout. I've always said been his biggest admirer in the fact that you have a guy who's his career scoring or what he did for this team compared to where he's at now in the organization and seeing with the big three. And he was the guy who was interviewing the uh, players, you know, before they came out and got on the duck boats he yeah. made himself into a, a commodity for this team. So he has, lu- he has, um, I guess, luxuries that some of us might not have, but if I'm the team, I'd be thinking the same way. Look, we don't need you talking for us. Or yeah. even putting that out there. Yeah, that's what you don't want. We don't. We don't need. We don't need no negativity after we just won the championship. Let exactly. Us, let us, right. Let's win the fucking championship and just be cool about it. We don't, right. need, we don't need. Yeah. I mean, there was enough stuff with yeah. the whole team with all the stuff with Ray and K- KG, and that got settled. And they good, and let's not bring it to where Park. The difference between Park and Paul, Paul does the Fox Sports stuff, but Paul is unapologetically a Celtic. I mean, the next day after they won, he wore his Celtic stuff on the air. Paul is down for Boston. He is a Celtic. Park has felt like, i got to make a name for myself. I didn't have a great, great career. I had an all-star caliber career. I won a championship. I was a quality defensive big man mm-hmm. for a decade or whatever. I got to make my name keeping it real. And I admire that because that's what's kept him on the air. 
he doesn't have he's not he's not making no friends. He's not going to turn around and say nice things just you know just because a guy likes him or he's going to he I'm sure he he had some issues with Kevin Durant, some things about said about Kevin Durant. He keeps it real. He's kept it real about the Celtics as I said. He treats everybody the same. He rips everybody. So for him to be yeah, on Yeah, he doesn't do that with LeBron. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that's the one one. <laughs> the little soft part. This episode of the Cedric Maxwell podcast is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over five million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play fantasy daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community today you can win up to a hundred times your money on prize pick with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars if you're looking for promotions prize picks has got you covered every week from lowering select players stats projections on tuesdays to help your lineup hit or getting your entry fees backed if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. With the finals over, the hoops action doesn't stop at prize picks. Women's basketball is still heating up with stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like Brianna Stewart, Aja Wilson. You can win up to 100 times your cash watching them ball out. It's that easy. I mean, we're talking about whether if Caitlin Clark can make more than three and a half three pointers made, Brianna Stewart going for more or less, tw- or more or less at twenty three points. You take your pick. I made my first ten dollars deposit, and I made some money. And you can do the same. Download the Prize Pick app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That's code CLNS on Prize Picks for a deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Pick more or less. It's that easy. Download the Prize Pick app today and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's CLNS. Pick more or less, and it's that easy. <laughs> well, yeah. I, think, I think for you him. Know, Ron, I'm going to give you another softball to hit here. Oh, my, I think. To your son. Oh, my God. You got your son. There. Oh, we don't. Oh, don't get Max started. Come on, man. If, 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 and, and look, I admire the fact that he's, that he's in, in the league. But if his name wasn't Bronny James, would we be talking about him? No. I, here's my thing on that, okay? Okay. Pivot it to, to LeBron. I don't have a problem with LeBron maneuvering his son to get drafted. What I have a problem is when you have your son and he wants to be like you, he wants to be a pro, pro ball player, okay? My goal, if I had a son in that position, would be, or if I had a son, who wanted to be a sports journalist like me or whatever. My goal would be, son, I want you to have the longest, best career possible, okay? And if we don't work together, then oh well. LeBron's fascination with playing with him, I think, has forced him and Bronny to skip steps because people are like, well, it's like Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. No, the hell it's not. Ken Griffey Jr., Came yeah. out of Fuller High School in Cincinnati in 1987. He was 18. Everybody freaking knew he was going to be in the bigs in a year or so. He, w- you saw like that that motherfucker is the real deal, okay? <laughs> and he was in the he was playing for the Mariners by the time he was 19. You saw it. Wow. Okay. You saw if you look at a young Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey, I forgot how long he was in the minors. It was not long. When he got drafted number one overall, and he and his dad was still serviceable. He was 40. So his dad had him young. I think his dad had him at 19. So he was 39, 40 by the time Griffey got Ken Griffey Jr. got to the bigs and they played together. So it was different. You saw Griffey was a mofo. Like he was going to be the man. You can't do that. You don't see that out of Bronny James. Yeah, don't. Okay? Yeah. And he's four my, years. And he's all four years, man. My whole thing with LeBron is you want to play with him, but you're going for – now he's a grown man. He can't go back to college. This is – he a, he a grown-ass man now. You done, put, you, you done taken your son at 19 and said, okay, no more college parties, no more girls like on, on the campus. 
He could have transferred. Okay, he didn't work out at USC. He could have transferred to 50 schools would have taken him in a minute. Played, had fun, came back from his Developed. Yeah. Developed, and then maybe came out next year or played another two years. He coming out averaging less than five points a game. And now, and his dad ain't going to be around forever. Gary, his captain teammate didn't get drafted, man. The dude averaged like three times more and all that. But yeah, yeah but- like, I, like to me, you you forcing your, your son to skip these steps just because you want to be on the team with him. And well, I, did you did you force the for Lakers, for a year or two? Did you force the Lakers to 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 get pretty him? much? Like, yeah. what would you think? Well, yeah, he wanted to play with his son. Yeah, <laughs> you, think, you think they're not gonna take a Max? Come on, man. I told, like, I, I, told, I, I, was, I was like, I was told my boys on a group chat. Rich Paul was like Suge Knight calling all the record companies. <laughs> If Snoop son wanted to be a rapper, and Rich Paul was like Suge Knight calling all the companies, was like, Eric "Don't you do Stuck, it, uh, yeah. Def Jam? You best not, but you best not sign Snoop son. He comes to death row. He comes to death row. Like it was like he did. He that was some gangster stuff. Yeah. Like, he called teams. You you bet not." See, draft, draft, Bronny, and see, oh, yo, draft, Bronny, and, and you, you, you know see, this, man. Draft, Bronny, and see what happens. Just like the way you, you see his blackness coming out you, now. Yeah, I like it. Like I love daddy, it. Bed not. Like your father was saying, <laughs> bed call, draft, Bronny, and see what happens. <laughs> Max, you ain't saying this on 98.5, yo. I love it. Go ahead, Gary. Know, Keep I, going, I, man. I, I, <laughs> so to me, that's what. I think, I think that's you're what, right. I think you're I right. I think it's like it's a disservice to his son in the sense of now this young man. Has got to go to the G League, go all these cities. It's going to be great if he ever gets on the court. But you're talking about a one or two year thing, and then you're going to retire. And this dude's got to make a career out of this because right. look, let's look at JD Davidson. And that's the hardest position, too, right, Gary? That's the let's most competitive JD position. JD Davidson. Davidson came out of Alabama after a freshman. He had a much better year than Bronny did. He's played two years in the G League. The Celtics have to decide if they want to sign him. Now he's a free agent, he's 21. He's like still trying to make it. Stay with Jake. Stay with Jaden Springer. Like mm-hmm. you want to be that guy, or Brandon Boston, the, the um the kid from the Clippers, Clipper. who was yeah. Terrence Clark's close friend, played one year at Kentucky. I want to say the Clippers just released him. He's twenty one now. He's trying to find himself. Like is that what you want for your? If I I don't want that for my son. If I'm mm-hmm. my son, I don't mm-hmm. want that. I want him no, to go dude. right to the league. Mm-hmm. Then. Try to run yeah. for rookie of the year and have a good long career. Not okay. Well, I got to go to Yugoslavia. No. I got to go to. Dude, dude, go dude, to- dude, you're, you're missing it here. There's a big difference. His daddy is a fucking billionaire, so mm. there's a big. Well, what happens a- if he retires, Max? He's yeah. still gonna be a billionaire. Yeah, but what's he yeah. gonna buy a team so and Brian, then sign Bronny? If, if he stops, <laughs> playing, if he stops, if Bronny, oh wait a minute, oh wait a minute, Bronny stops playing. In a year, what do you think he's gonna do? What do you think his daddy ain't gonna take care of him? No, but I'm saying he he's goal, safe for his, his career his, though. His, basketball, his, his, his basketball goals to be an career. NBA, his goals to be an NBA player. No, financially he's fine. Well, I ain't yeah. worried about Bronny going broke I, and I, in the I get that. But, <laughs> I'm, but, I'm worried about Bronny having a 10 to 12 year NBA career well, because we he all, rushed we, the process. Well, because, we all, yeah, we all can look at that as you're saying right now. I, I just don't think that's a service to Bronny. I, don't, I, don't, I yeah, I agree. I agree right. because but, how many brothers up out here in the G League? Twenty. Look at look at James Young when the Celtics drafted that kid in two thousand ten years ago. Whatever the hell happened to him? Mm. What, what happened to him? He played. He played a year and a half. And what, where he at? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. And, and that dude was a lottery pick. He was uh, a fourth, or seventeenth. I think fourteenth or seventeenth. Can't remember. He was RJ league. RJ Hunter just got back in the G League, man. He's yeah, been like, back and forth. Uh, like, that shit, it's a and I'm not saying he's gonna be broke, but trying to be a G Leaguer and trying to go through that route is hard as hell to be without without, to be having, without having LeBron's name on top of it. I yeah, agree, but, I agree. so yeah. they just gonna keep him on the <clears> roster <throat> on, on the main. So LeBron said, You better keep my boy, don't send him to the G League. Is that gonna help him? Mm. Like I don't know, like to in me, LA too. You're doing a disservice to him because not it's nothing to do with the nepotism. Okay, if Bronny was like averaging 22 points a game, that I'd be like, yep, let 
you know, let him there. Yeah, he ready. He's gonna average less than five points a game. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not di- dissing him. I watch a lot of his games. He's got some skills. He's six one, man. He got <laughs> six seven. He's six one. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's like so you're gonna be a, a truth. Oh, his upside is Derek. Oh, Derek White. Okay, Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday six four. And you see how big Drew Holiday is and strong yeah. that dude is. And Derek White six five six six. That's that's not the equal, man. Mm, no. Ronnie is 6'1. So uh, Avery, Avery Bradley might be close if he becomes, but Avery was an elite defender. And, and Avery, Avery turned out to be a really good shooter, though. Too. Yes, he, and he worked yeah, on his yeah. stuff. He polished he that. The closest comparison, and Avery came out at 19 and he was mm. injured, and Avery took a while to get going. So I'm not, I really hope he succeeds because I, I think he's a good kid just having seen interviews with him. But man, I just think they just fast track this thing. It, it could have been next year. Okay, son, you're coming off the heart thing. Play a full season at Ohio State, Duquesne, wherever you want to go. Get your numbers up. Get your confidence up. Come out in 25. Yeah. And then do the same thing. And maybe you got a little traction now. Like, it's just, it's, I'm not saying he shouldn't have got drafted. I'm just well, saying, if you're the Lakers, well, if you're the Lakers, you're saying you're saying exactly that. You're saying that what you're saying is like what ninety percent of the people. Because now he's a grown man, Max. Like no, kids, not, no parties. He's been taken. He, right. he in that NBA life. If you know, you can hang out with your dad all you want. You can go out to dinner with him, but you're a grown man now. Like this is a grown man's league. Even if you 18, 19, 20, you got to figure out what to do with the mother 22 hours. You got to get, you got to figure out what to do with the women. You got to figure out what to do with your homeboys. Some of them want to hang out with you too much or get you into stuff you don't need to get into. Like, I'm mm-hmm. sure you don't have the structure. I get it. I, I don't, I don't, I think he's a but lot. But it's just like, he will, you, you just, you just turn this into see, a straight up grown man. I think it's a lot, I think it's a lot more than that. I think he has to get his game up to par. Yeah. In addition to that, that though. That's, yeah. the, that's the biggest thing because that's a he's got to live in the gym. Not, and you know how it is, loser. Max. And you know Joe Sway. Some of these young dudes, I remember, I remember like when I first got on the Celtic beat, seeing Bill Walker. And and, and he, that dude was around KG, Paul, Ray, and that dude was out of fucking shape. Mm-hmm. And it was like, Bill, what do you what more it what, what more motivation do you need? You're working around three Hall of Famers. And if you want to throw Rondo in there, maybe four eventually. I don't know. But you want the four all stars, and you come in here and you don't you leave you you leave in practice and them dudes are still working. Right. He was in New York by 2011, man. That yeah, was it. Like, it was, like, it was short I stint. Seeing, I remember I remember hearing about him in, 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 when he was in high school, how much of a bad freaking and I just remember I remember J.R. Giddens, who didn't wasn't very good either, but he worked Lee J.R. Giddens worked his ass off. He he's worked out with Ray, like he was trying to get it. And it's right. just like the league, and I know the Lakers will have his back. So that's a special situation. How do you have his back? How do you have his back when you can't play? <laughs> well, he's gonna. Do they're gonna. They're gonna. Yeah, they're gonna make his. <laughs> when, his father, when his father retires, all bets are off. Yeah, Why the Lakers thing. don't care about him in five years when he's twenty four and he still ain't quite got there? Let it's, me change. Time. Look at look at Davidson. Look at JD Springer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J, uh, uh, Jane Springer. Jane yeah. Springer is twenty one years old. He came out. All them dudes like like you undersized know, guards though. That's, like, that's what a good the point. hell are you? Why are you coming out? Especially with it, and JD and both with NIL money. You still coming out? You can make money now. You can hustle in college. You ain't got. I know that's a good gotta, point. You man. ain't got to take the envelope under the door anymore. Like a lot of these kids did to buy it. The SUV and take your by out. the web or some shit. You could go to the car. You could go run right in the car dealership, get you a brand new car, get money, right. and st- like. There's no reason to go to the league unless you know you're gonna play. No well, reason. The best None. one, unless you just really don't like hand. school. That's Who didn't cool. like college? No. Who the hell like like is college that bad? Well, <laughs> like, what? Let, let, let me say this. Like, why is that? Let, let me you suffer in the college. You. And our L money. Let me explain this to you. The best compliment I ever had came from one guy, <laughs> and that was JoJo White. And I do remember being on the court playing, and I looked over at JoJo White. I just made the move, and JoJo White was in his 10th year. 
you know, I was a rookie. And he looked at another guy beside him and said, my fucking play. play. <laughs> and at that point, you know. But I'm just telling you, LeBron, when, when Bronny James is going into the situation with guys who are ahead of him already, and then there's going to be the nepotism thinking like, well, you the only reason you're here is because your daddy. Your dad, yeah. And that's going to make guys go at you even more. And LeBron James can't protect him on the floor once not he gets out floor. there. You're going to yeah. be, you're going to be not in the G League. Not in the G League when all these youngsters. You are. Hungry, hungry G Leaguers. Yeah, that's a good point, man. And don't talk. It all be all in his ear yeah. about his daddy. Yeah. But yeah. 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 Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That, that is that we we've seen that how many times we saw that happen with all all of Jordan's sons who were trying to get in and you know just trying to get to where they but all they could hear was my very seldom you hear that where you have a player that's a young player who's coming this league. I can't think of one in a long time. You know, Steph Curry is the one that, that comes that's to mind. Probably league. it. But other than that, that I can think know, of all these Kobe, other guys. obviously Kobe. Sometimes then you're going, well, what what happened to this guy? I mean, what? Yeah, happened I mean, Alonzo Mourning. That it son, just doesn't happen. Alonzo Mourning's son tried to make the league. Shaq's son tried to make the league. Oh Ryan yeah. King's oldest son tried to make the league. Like, Ewing's kid, right or no? Yeah, Patrick Ewing. He had a little cup of coffee. He played some. Yeah, Patrick he played a little. Glenn Rice ended up getting in trouble. Glenn Rice's son, like it is not. He, look, look at look at Kenyon Martin's son, mm. like who's a freakish athlete. And he's bounced around now. He's in Philly. Like to me, it's hard. It yeah. is hard. And those right. dudes all have better college careers than Bronny. And so the protection is there because LeBron is there. And I applaud that. And I said, I ain't tripping about the nepotism or picking them. You know, give him a shot. But you just started his grown man life already. You and- are picking the, you are you are picking against that by I'm saying not- exactly what you said. No, I mean, I, he's just – that's his prediction, though. I just – I, 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 I don't like – I don't yeah. mind nepotism. Whatever is whatever. It's a league of nepotism. We all right. know, Max. Like, we all not, see not we all see player. people's sons around the organization that we not, work. Oh, oh, and, oh, oh. <laughs> and, not, as, not as a player. We see that in management. We see that in, in coaching. But when you yeah. step out there on the floor, you don't see that like that. Either you no. can play or you can't play. We think yeah, about, we think, about we think about Gary Payton's son. Gary Payton could play or he couldn't play, and he's you know he's okay. Yeah, he's, 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 made, a, he's made a living. He's able to do. You know, we've seen very seldom, very seldom we've seen that particular thing happen. I I I am not mad. I, I'm just I guess I'm just confused, and I, well, I'm not confused, but I really feel bad for the, this. Is one time I feel bad for the Lakers that they were forced to do something that they know damn well that they shouldn't have done. <laughs> that's, all, that's, that's all I say. They know damn well. Yeah. You, mess with, you mess with Suge Knight. That's what happened. Huh? You get that. You get that phone call. I say you mess with Suge Knight. That's what happened. That's what happened. <laughs> 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 Gary, all right, let's talk real quick. Um, the Celtics rookies, though. Baylor Shireman at number 30. You got um, Ann Watson at number 54. Uh, I guess we start with Shireman. Is there any belief that the fact that the Celtics didn't go ahead and try to trade to the, into the second round, which when you think about the second apron, the tax implications and all that, would have been significantly cheaper? Is there any stock in thinking that Brad, like this is his guy, like he 100% really believes that this guy – can can develop into an everyday player, or is this just him picking at number number thirty? Which one is it? I do think they really like Shireman. Like I heard from a couple of people after the draft because I hadn't seen, I hadn't watched much Creighton. I ain't gonna lie, it wasn't like I was studying Creighton all year. Like I knew he was the best player on Creighton, and and I'd heard of him a little bit, but a lot copy couple of people I talked to were high on him and said that was a good pick. Like they were like, oh, that kid can play. He's going. Um, he's going. He's going to fit into what the Celtics yeah, that they're trying to do. I thought that, and then Watson. I surprised he he fell that far. Gonzaga players usually know how to play. They mm-hmm. make pretty good pros. They make solid pros. Um, I don't know if they'll ever be an all star anything, but I think those are two quality picks. And those two dudes are twenty three. They ready to play. That's and, the difference between. But, but here's the thing: the shooters too. Do you yeah. really? Do you really need those players? You talk about. Are they they gonna, need shooting, and they got to prepare for life after when the salaries start kicking in because they got to figure out what to do with Derek White, okay? What do you, you mean? Wanna, 
You, you bring him back, <laughs> but then salary wise, you want, I mean, you got to pat, you got to, you got to cultivate some of these young guys because you, because you can't sign mid level guys. You can't sign mid level exceptions. No, no way. Uh, buyout, buyouts, right? No buyout yeah, contracts. No buyouts. No. This, seven, this second apron is, is limited. <laughs> it's a real deal. <laughs> Well, you know what? Won't you won't you go to war right now with what you have? If yeah. You keep, if you keep those guys you have right now, you go. To you war. can make for the long the, the next five years because yeah. you're gonna have to find you have to find a big because or see what happens to Porzingis because Al this might be his last year coming up. I don't know if he plays into his forties. We'll see. But Al, look, whoa, whoa, whoa! Let me tell you. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Al was, we'll walk Al the beast now. Huh? <laughs> now what? Al got Al got five damn kids over there, and they're paying him ten million dollars a year. What you What you think his wife is saying to him? <laughs> got a new crib too. I talked to new her. house and everything. I to her about Al, tell him to come home and spend time with the kids. I asked. Her, I said, um, "Oh, everybody else went down to Miami to celebrate. Why didn't Al go?" She looked at me. Hey. Go, are you crazy? He got five kids at home. Al Horford, I think it's gonna go year to year. He's good year to year. Getting the $10 million dollars and keep keep getting the $10 million dollars until his body just breaks down. Yeah, man. you see that the thing about Al right now, he's still in great shape. Oh, they great baby shape. him, they massage him all the time. Why are you going? Why would you go home? No. You do what? Well, Gary, they got to sign one of these free agents, though, whether it's Luke Cornett, whether it's Tillman. Like, you can't let both of these guys walk, though, right? I don't think so. I think they – obviously, I think they like Cornett a lot. Tillman, I don't know if it worked out as well as they thought it would. And the same with Brissett. I was a little – I think everybody thought Brissett would take that Grant Williams role, and that didn't work yeah. out. And Brissett just ended up kind of being a, a defensive spark plug here and there. But, you know, the thing about the Celtics, you have – the veteran minimum, and when the market starts to dry up, there's going to be some quality players out there who are going to take that little three million dollar minimum they got to try to win a chip. So I think the Celtics' options are a lot better than it sounds because oh, they only have the minimum. But wait till this market starts. The wait. Well, then I want to ask you this question because you're kind of an insider. Where does Paul George go at? Does he stay oh, oh, in LA question. or does he or does he go to Philly? Clock's ticking, by the way, so we'll see. We might find out in the next 24 hours. I think he stays in L.A. I just really? think, why would you – unless, you unless Philly throws everything, because obviously Philly's got to – That's what I'm up. thinking, Gary. I'm thinking yeah, Philly, Philly might have, like, the greatest presentation or something like yeah. that, that. Yeah, but – But to yeah. ask a guy to go to Los Angeles who's born from that area and go to Philly – and just be in a different environment in the East Coast and Paul. It's gritty. It's it's <laughs> I, I don't I just think the environment, like I you yeah. know, the Clippers are like, the Clippers are like, man, we, you know, you good, but we ain't one nothing which with you. So like we're not gonna offer you the four year. They no. gave they gave Kawhi three. Does he take three? Does he take four but less money? Or does Philly with Daryl Morey throw the book, throw everything at him? And say, you can be our number two, but he goes to Philly. He's a number three guy. Okay, like but you, you're not you're not number, actually, but but here's the thing about thirty four. Yeah, but you but the thing you're talking about right now, maybe it takes on the same position as Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is not a mm -hmm. number two guy, three guy, four guy. But if you're Paul George and you're more less interested in winning the chip, you take that position because now. You got MB, you got you got Maxi, and well, I'm a feel, I can fill in the blanks. And you guys are talking about well, he's in LA now. You're not really in LA during the season because you're always traveling during the off season. You can go where you want to go, but during the during the season, you always boom, 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 boom. You're going all over the place. So I think that Paul George, to me, it makes more sense that Paul George signs a contract and goes to Philly. And that makes Philly tougher, but I still don't believe Philly has enough to beat the Celtics. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's where he probably should go if they roll out the red carpet for him. The Clippers have shown that, like, listen, we're not – we're kind of over this whole Paul Kawhi thing. Mm -hmm. um, and Orlando's a wild card. Like, they got the money. They need to take – they need a veteran to take the next step. Mm -hmm. um, 
Is it going to be somebody like that or Clay Thompson? Well, you know, Clay's out there too now. Um, but I, you know what? I just think somehow the Clippers come up and say, okay, we're good. This, this is what we're going to give you. Come on back. And of course, it's reported that Paul George is supposed to have meetings with these teams. So we'll see what happens, what comes out of that. Uh, the beginning of free agency, of course, the first week of free agency, though, that's going to be one of the, uh, the the top the top reports for sure. But last and uh, last but not least, Gary, got to ask you about this Celtics book you got coming out. Saw you tweeting about it a couple of weeks ago, days after the Celtics won the 18th championship. Tell us about it, man. I know it's not just about the 2024 team, but the uh, franchise overall, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, we have I have a, a, a book. It's a, it's a kind of pictorial history of the Celtics, all the great moments, uh, the great games, the great Celtics of all time. And let me see if I can find my damn name. name better be in this motherfucker. No, I was waiting for that shit. It might be. I don't know. <laughs> well, ain't no damn book. I knew you were going to say that. Here we go. I was going to say, I was going to preface the question to be like, yeah, yeah better be Max in there. There he is. Draft Max, Cedric Maxwell. So that's one of the top moments. I had to pick about 170 moments. Yeah, he, he had that highlighted. Look at that. Look at that, yeah, Max. See? So we're going to have a highlight. In the editing process, but there's, there's Max playing against the Bullets. He's actually. Is that a no look? Okay, Max. No, yeah, no look. He's actually passing the ball. Yeah, Let you don't see that often. What he's wearing assists. So, <laughs> what are y'all talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, that What's that? Man. What's that? One of uh, one of three three hundred assists, yeah, career assists. How many assists you got? I was not a reluctant. Dad, surrounded by man. looking here, surrounded by being guarded by his close friend Rick Mahorn <laughs> during those during his bullets. Oh, day. your your boy. Yeah, so I didn't even know he played for the Bullets. Damn. Yeah, yeah, he started with the Bullets before he went to the Pistons. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a pictorial color color photo, mostly color, some of the black and white from the fifties and sixties. But right, right. You know, if, if you if you and I'm not saying this because it's my book, but I had to really study the history of the Celtics, all the great moments from the fifties and the sixties. The first black, obviously Chuck Cooper, the first black player drafted in the history of the NBA. Obviously, the Russell years, Russell being the coach, the 70s with uh, JoJo White, Dave uh, mm. Cowens, and John Havlicek to the 80s, and even the tough, some of the, and I've talked talk about some of the tough times to the, the, the early 2000s, the, the, the tragic my, of Lynn Bias and Reggie Lewis. You know, it's a history of almost 80 years uh, now of the Celtic organization with moments, photos, all the way until the 18th championship and, and, and the parade. So we got we got that included too. So if you want to learn and it's for kids too, you know, just, and it's my vignettes, my summary, summarizing some of the great moments. And so if you want to read about the organization, uh, check it out on Amazon. It's called. Man, I yeah, I was going to say, what's the name? What's the name of this book, Gary? <laughs> the Boston Celtics, an illustrated timeline. What page are you on? Huh? What fucking page am I on? What page? Is it? <laughs> it's better be a single digit. Better be. I need a little chapter in there. Page, page, page fifty. Page oh, okay. Right. Well, he had to do the fifties and sixties, so yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. I can't put you first. You want to put you before Bill Russell? I didn't say before Bill Russell. <laughs> I left stuff out. I could have put Matt, Max. You know, owns the family room with chicken wings. I could have put that. Wow. In there. <laughs> 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 you know, because people are gonna be thinking that way. Be like, you know, he's not a broadcaster. He's not this. He's not he's that. Just, not he, a former player. He just goes in the wise room and gets chicken wings and nobody. Yeah. And well, nobody, like Jason Tatum said, and I, just was, anything, I just thought you was. I just thought you was a broadcaster. Yeah, that was funny as hell when he said that. <laughs> Why do you let Jason do you like that, man? Okay, I, I, you know what? I did the same thing to Jason when he came up to me uh, in Indiana. I said. Uh, he said, man, I'm going to win you one. I'm going to win your ring this year. I said, oh, I already got two. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you get your own. Yeah, I'm, I'm yourself good here. One. Yeah. So I, I love Join the fraternity, show. right. I'm going I'm to have to put this uh, picture out that I have of myself, Al, uh, Porzingis, and Jason Tatum holding the trophy. Oh, that's and a great everybody, pick. Everybody looks at me like I was sick, man, because I'm standing beside Porzingis. I'm like, they said, what happened to you? Are you sick? You okay? I said, this dude is seven foot five. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the Damn, Max, you're shrunk. Yeah. Yeah, right. 
You get no, brother. You know <laughs> he makes he makes everyone look small for sure. All right, he's he's Gary Washburn of the Boston Globe, man. Also, uh, one third of the Big Three NBA podcast here on CLNS Media, and it's always fun catching up with Gary, man. Look at that, over an hour, man. We could go for another one for sure, man. Gary Washburn, appreciate you coming by, and we ain't paying your ass either. No, <laughs> you talking about my money, man? Yeah, yeah here you go again. Well, Get you your hand out of my pocket now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you put my monies out there, Max. No, that was one of the funniest segments for sure. <laughs> you broke the black code with that, man. Oh, oh, you did your own. You broke the black code with that, man. <laughs> Brother, talk about that money, man. That's a valid point. That's a valid point. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. <laughs> He's Cedric Maxwell. I am Joe Swayne for one, one last time. Thank you, Gary, for coming on, man. And uh, everyone out there, appreciate you. Uh, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys next week. Joseph Pavone here, CLNS Media, and if you made it this far, that means you really like this video. So hit subscribe, make sure you keep our notifications on, damn it, and we got plenty of uh, great content coming your way.